from Hollywood. The heart of the entertainment world. The Hollywood Palace. With your host, Vincent Edwards. Tonight, Bertha and Tina. Betty Davis. Liza Minnelli. Miss Elizabeth. Lillian Montevecchi. Joan Rivers. The Rogie Sisters. Mitchell Ayers from the Hollywood Palace Orchestra. This portion brought to you by Bayer Aspirin. Bayer is pure aspirin, not just part aspirin. Bayer Aspirin. Bayer works wonders. And by new Bravo Floor Wax. Bravo. So tough, you can wash it with detergents. We'll return to the Hollywood Palace after a word from one of our sponsors. Now, a floor wax so tough, you can wash it with detergents. It's Bravo, new from Johnson Wax. Here's proof. We'll wash this Bravo shine with a strong detergent. And look, Bravo floor wax still comes up shiny. With Bravo, there's no need to re-wax each time you wash. So get new Bravo. Bravo, so tough. You can wash it with detergents. Bravo, patent pending by Johnson Wax. Lotion thick, lightning quick. New Instant Pride from Johnson Wax. The liquid wax you can use to clean and wax. As easy and often as a dusting spray. Leaves a hard wax shine every time you dust. Instant Pride is a rich, thick wax lotion that pampers and protects your furniture. Just squeeze, wipe. Easy as dusting with new lotion thick, lightning quick Instant Pride. And now, from the Hollywood Palace, here is your host, Vincent Edwards! A fella needs a girl to sit by his side at the end of a weary day. To sit by his side and listen to him talk and agree with the things he'll say. A fella needs a girl to hold in his arms when the rest of the world goes wrong. To hold in his arms and know that she believes that a fella is wise and strong. When things go right and his job's well done, he wants to share the prize he's won. If no one shares and no one cares, what's the fun of a job well done? All the prize he's won. A fella needs a home, his own kind of home, and to make his dream come true. A fella needs a girl, his own kind of girl. My kind of girl is you and you and you, 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 and you. Thank you. Thank you and good evening. Oh, boy, have I got a pain here. <laughs> I don't know whether it's an astrocytoma or a glioblastoma. Do you know what that is, lady? <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> I'm very happy to be your host this evening. This is an unusual Hollywood Palace show. We have an all-girl cast, and I'm the only man. It's uh, been a very exciting evening with all the girls backstage. You know, it, it looks like Frank Sinatra's rumpus room. <laughs> They ran short of dressing rooms, and I had to dress with one of the ladies. And we divided the room in two. I have one half, and Bertha the Elephant has the other. <laughs> so far, it's cost me $83 just for peanuts. <laughs> Among the uh, lovely ladies on our show tonight is the famous and dynamic motion picture star, Betty Davis. And now, let me let you meet three other members of the cast. They're from France, and they do an amazing balancing turn, the Roger sisters.
gay sisters from Gay Perry. Now, if you've seen this next attractive young lady on the Tonight Shows and other talk programs, you, you know that she's an accomplished conversationalist. But she's also a very fine comedian in her own right. And we're happy to have her on our all-girl team tonight, Miss Joan Rivers. <laughs> I love the way he dresses, you know? He dresses just the way I like a man to dr dress. Very, very sexy. Ooh. No wedding ring. I, I'm very wedding ring conscious because I just got married. Actually, two of us just got married in my family. An old maid cousin and me, and uh, not to each other, but you know. And um, my, <laughs> my cousin, fascinating story. Uh, she was 77 years old, never married. 77, never married. Fooled around, you know, but never mind. <laughs> she goes to a testimonial dinner for Geritol, meet, meets a guy 92 years old, and they got married. Isn't that lovely? They had to. <laughs> That's a 92-year-old group for April. <laughs> so my mother said, let's give her a party. So we went to this hotel in New York, and we all stood there and we toasted them in a glass of Alka-Salsa and the juice of a lemon. <laughs> and then as they were running from the hotel into the ambulance, we all, we all lined up and we threw rice and orthopedic shoes and, you know. And uh, that left just me. And a lot of people thought I wouldn't get married because um, I don't know how many of you here are in show business, but um, it's very hard really to meet anybody in the business because everybody you meet is either married already or a dancer. And, um, <laughs> That's true. And the only one I was going out with till I married my husband was my hairdresser, Mr. Phyllis. <laughs> but I, I, mean, I knew my husband for years, which is interesting because he never paid any attention to me. We went to the same school. We went to a progressive school, the Fanny Hill and Dale Country Day. And um, he never noticed me because I was a very ugly... I was a fat child. Not ugly so much, but like fat, you know? Like... Like fat! Like, like, like I was my own buddy at camp, you know. That's right. They go, buddies, my hands would go up. And because I was so fat, I didn't have any friends, because nobody could get close enough to me to find out I was fun. So I began to retreat very much into myself. And my parents, my parents spotted this. My parents are very intelligent, sensitive parents. And my father said, the lump is turning strange. So, <laughs> in order to cheer me up, whenever they'd go for a drive, they'd take me with them in the U-Haulet. And as a child, as a child, you can tell, you know, your parents are being nice, and I wanted to say thank you, but I figured that would be gouch. So, <laughs> B.A. <laughs> so, how does a child say thank you? Tick, tick, tick. I decided to do something my parents wanted me to do, right? I decided I'd get dressed myself and my parents would be thrilled because they were waiting for this, you know? So I remember I got up very early in the morning, I was gonna dress myself very, very early. I remember that Mickey's big hand was just past his nose. And uh, I get out of bed and I start to get dressed. And remember the shoes we wore, like, the shoes that go up? Like those! <laughs> Put your foot up, sir. <laughs> He's not wearing them. I apologize. His date is. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awful if you were? <laughs> so anyhow, I decide I'm gonna get dressed. So I get the shoes, and I get one shoe on, and I lace it up, you know? And then for a fat kid, you have to move everything over. <laughs> Other shoe. And I laced it up. And then I got the leggings, and you get one legging and the other legging, and you go zip, zip. And then the suspenders, oh, we were stunners, right? And you get one suspender, click, and the other suspender, click, and this one would go up in your face. That's when a fat kid learns to swear. I would get my coat, and if it's last year's coat, and you're a chubby kid, you get the smart, wimpy effect, you know? It was a big coat because I was going to grow into it. <laughs> I got the mitten with the pin, and the other mitten with the pin, and the hat with the snap. And I was ready. And I went into my mother's room, and my mother took one look at me and hysterical. She dressed herself. 
herself. She dressed herself. And she takes me in to show my father. My father takes a look. Hysterical. How can be that? She dressed herself. She dressed herself. And they were so pleased at the way I looked, they decided to take me out to show me off to all their friends. And I think that day, in fact, I know, I know that that warm July day, my, my parents were very proud. Johnny, Johnny, you know, it's so nice to see you again. Oh, it's nice to see you, too. Remember those days back in New York when you used to call me up for a date? Ah, how could I forget? Hello, Joan. Hello, Vince. I'll be down to get you in a taxi, honey. You better be ready about half past eight. Now, honey, don't be late. I want to be there when the band starts playing. Remember when we get there, honey. The two-step, we're going to show them all. We're going to dance out both our shoes when they play those general blues. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? <laughs> For fever of a cold or flu, Bayer works wonders. It's truly wonderful how two Bayer tablets reduce fever, help bring temperature down to normal, but amazingly, never below. Bayer aspirin is pure aspirin, not just part aspirin. And doctors recommend aspirin to reduce fever, to help bring temperature down to normal, but amazingly, never below. For fever of a cold or flu, Bayer works wonders. I've got to have a laxative, but that tastes awful, and that's too strong. Flavored Haley's M.O. Mild laxative, gentle but thorough, good. Haley's M.O. it is. Tastes good, but will it work? What a difference. What a wonderful laxative. Flavored Haley's M.O. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a very beautiful dancing star from France who comes to Hollywood, to the Hollywood Palace by way of the Tropicana in Las Vegas. She belongs on an all-girl show because, believe me, she's all-girl. And uh, here she is to give us the answer to what's new pussycat, Miss Liliane Montevecchi.
Wasn't she wonderful, Miss Lily Montrevecchi? <laughs> the Hollywood Palace sent all the way to Switzerland for our next young lady. She's one of Europe's most exciting aerialists, and our outdoor cameras were turned on to photograph her act. They're ready, so here she is, Miss Elizabeth. <laughs> She is 45 feet in the air. You can see she works without a net. Cigars, the Adam Sisters, Edith, Editha, and Edie. We're here to.
to entertain you from the world of movie stars. We're here to sing the praises of Muriel Cigars. Corona, Magnum, Panatella Extra 2. Three great 10 cent Muriel Cigars is especially for you. Get the rich taste you smoke for, the mildness you hope for. So much more cigar for only 10 cents. Try Muriel Corona's Magnum or Panatella Extra. We'd like to have you join the crowd that's smoking mild today. Just try a pack of Muriel and you'll be on your way to greater smoking pleasure and a taste that is sublime. Why don't you pick one up and smoke it sometime? Smoke Muriel Mild, Muriel Mild Cigar. Our next uh, very charming young lady has a brilliant theatrical heritage, but it's her own exceptional talent and great singing style that have made her a bright new star, Miss Liza Minnelli. We know the time we have cannot be replaced. This time, this time, this time, let's not hesitate. We know our time is brief and it cannot wait. There is a time for hope and beginning, a time to lose, a time to for winning, a time to waste on lazy vacations, and time for haste and beautiful temptations. This time. This time there's no time to waste. We know the time we have cannot be replaced. This time, this time, this time let's not hesitate. We know our time is brief and it cannot wait. It's a time for autumn and sadness. A time for youth and love's happy madness. A time for truth and being together to go for walks in sunny April weather. There is a time for spring and for sighing, a time to laugh, a time to for crying, a time for dreams and for sweet pretending. But then it seems that suddenly it's ending. This time, this time, this time there's no time to waste. We fade away as fast as the morning mist. This time, this time, Liza, where, where, where did 
Just one. Oh, thank you. But what about those two characters with her? What, what about them? Oh, you know, this is supposed to be an all-girls show. They're not exactly the feminine type. Why? Their, their hair was so short, I thought they were girls. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's putting us on, but I'll forgive you anyway. Well, you don't have to. Well, I'm trying to be nice. Yeah, I know. Everybody on television is always trying to be nice. Everybody's so nice on television, a lot of teeth. I have an idea. Let's let's do a not nice number. A not nice number? Yeah. Uh, I have eyes for you to give you dirty looks. That is a not nice number, all right. I have words for you that do not come from children's books. How about that? That's no, not rotten enough. <laughs> There's a trick with a knife I'm learning to do. That's better. And everything I've got belongs to you. I've a powerful anesthesia in my fist. And the perfect wrist to give your neck a twist. There are hammerlock holes. I've mastered a few. And everything I've got belongs to you. Share for share, share alike. You'll get struck each time I strike. You for me. And me for you. I'll give, give you plenty of nothing. I'm not yours for better, but for worse. And I've learned to give that well-known which is curse. And I've a terrible tongue. A temper for two. Everything I've got belongs to you. You're a pal. 
be your a friend. I'd stick by you to the end. Underneath all your brass. Beats the heart of a liar. I've got pretty things for us to swap. <laughs> Two black guys for one karate chop. <laughs> I've got a mean streak. Yeah, I've got one too. Everything I've got Who? Everything I've got How? Everything I've got Belongs to me <laughs> Now Now everybody open your mouths And say ah that's it. We'll be right back with Betty Davis, Bertha and Tina, and lots more in the Hollywood Palace. Stay tuned for lots more in the Hollywood Palace. It's nice to know, when you're with someone you like, that you never have to worry about perspiration odor. Not with Dial Soap Around. The reason starts here. Dial is made to stop odor before it starts. Dial with AT7 removes the bacteria that cause odor, removes them more effectively than any other deodorant soap. And then Dial goes on, leaves an invisible antiseptic on your skin, an invisible antiseptic that continues to protect you long after you bathe. Aren't you glad you use dial? And now, two of the most glamorous girls in show business, and they belong in the palace show because they were born with a trunk. Bertha and her daughter, Tina.
That's tons of fun with Bertha and Tina. <laughs> C.J. Madison is the trainer, and the brave young lady is Stephanie Lawrence. If you'd like to see more of Bertha and Tina, they're at the Nugget and Sparks, East Reno, Nevada, every night. We'll return in a moment with Miss Betty Davis. Do you have to hide your hair to look prettier? Is it dry, dull? Then you need Condition by Clairol. It's the beauty prescription for troubled hair. Suddenly, your hair looks glorious, much too beautiful to hide. Condition brings new life and luster to hair dried by sun or wind, over-lightened, to hair split from teasing, frizzy from permanence. Condition is not a hairdressing, but an after-shampoo beauty pack that needs no heat. You see and feel a difference after the very first treatment. Condition adds bounce, body, satiny sheen, actually makes your hair feel stronger. So good for your hair, hairdressers prescribe it to revitalize driest, dreariest hair. So if you have to hide your hair to look prettier, stop. Use Condition. Turn your hair into a glowing compliment. Condition by Clairol, the beauty prescription for troubled hair. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Betty Davis. This is a first for me on the Hollywood Palace tonight. This is the first time I've ever followed an elephant act. <laughs> this being an all-feminine show, with the exception of our host, I'd like to do something on tonight's prevailing subject, girls. It was written by that outstanding leading lady of literature, Dorothy Parker. Dorothy Parker is the one who said, men seldom make passes at girls who wear glasses. <laughs> and with that one line, she started a whole new industry, contact lenses. <laughs> she also said, you can lead a girl to Vassa, but you cannot make her think. <laughs> no less a fellow author than Somerset Maugham remarked, that Dorothy Parker's humor bubbles up and overflows, especially when she writes verse. He must have had in mind the one that goes, Oh, life is a glorious cycle of song, a medley of extemporanea, and love is a thing that can never go wrong, and I am Marie of Romania. <laughs> <laughs> or this one. By the time you swear you're his, shivering and sighing, and he vows his passion is infinite, undying, lady, make a note of this, one of you is lying. <laughs> and now here is a poem by Miss Parker about two girls called Biographies. Now, this is the story of Lucy Brown, a glittering jewel in virtue's crown. From earliest youth, she aspired to please. She never fell down and dirtied her knees. She put all her pennies in savings banks. She never omitted her pleas and thanks. She swallowed her spinach without a squawk and patiently listened to teachers talk. She thoughtfully stepped over worms and ants and earnestly watered the potted plants. She didn't dismember expensive toys and never would play with the little boys. And when to young womanhood Lucy came, her mode of behavior was just the same. She was always safe in her home at dark and never went riding around the park. She wouldn't put powder upon her nose and petticoats sheltered her spotless hose. She knew how to market and mend and sweep by quarter past ten, she was sound asleep. In presence of elders, she held her tongue. 
the way they did when the world was young. And people remarked in benign accord, you'll see that she gets her just reward. Observed their predictions were more than fair. She married an affluent millionaire, so gallant and handsome and wise and gay, and rated in Bradstreet at double A. And she lived with him happily all her life and made him a perfectly elegant wife. <laughs> now, <laughs> Marigold Jones, from her babyhood, was bad as the model Miss Brown was good. She stuck out her tongue at her grieving nurse. She frequently rifled her grandma's purse. She banged on the table and broke the plates. She jeered at the passing inebriates and tore all her dresses and ripped her socks and shattered the windows with fair-sized rocks. The words on the fences she'd memorized. She blackened her dear little brother's eyes and cut off her sister's abundant curls and never would play with little girls. <laughs> and when she grew up, as is hardly strange, her manner of life underwent no change, but faithfully followed her childhood plan. And once there was talk of a married man. <laughs> she sauntered in public in drapery, supporting no sec secrecy to her knees. She constantly uttered what was not true. She flirted and petted of what have you, and tendered advice by her kind mama. Her answer, I shudder to state, was blah. <laughs> and people remarked in sepulchral tones, you see what becomes of Marigold Jones. Observe their predictions were more than fair. She married an affluent millionaire, so gallant and handsome and wise and gay, and rated in Bradstreet at double A, and she lived with him happily all her life and made him a perfectly elegant wife. <laughs> It's your type. Well, I like the first one, but uh, I'd like to meet the second one. <laughs> You're so very attractive. Just my bad luck not to be sick today. <laughs> Betty, you know, I'm really delighted to finally meet you. And I'm delighted to finally meet you. You know, you've brought romance into millions of girls' lives. You and that other handsome television doctor. What's his name? I forgot. <laughs> now, come on, you didn't forget. Well, Betty, you don't know those ABC executives. They make you forget. You know, they've got ways. Well, whatever his name is, Dr. Javago. What I mean is there should be more romance in the world. I used to dream of a brave knight who carried me away in his white horse. Now I see him on television, and all he does is make my clothes white. You're right, Betty. It's the tempo of the times. You know, the days of gallantry are over. Well, when a man takes a girl out for a drive, he doesn't even go around and open the door. How do you open a door on a motorcycle? <laughs> well, thank you, Vince, for bringing romance to television. I have to go home now and watch another romantic show. Oh, really? Uh, which one is that? The Batman. <laughs> We hope you're in the mood to break a habit. Because now your whole idea about margarines will change. This is the first soft margarine, new chiffon. Chiffon softness shows you its lowest in saturated fat of any spread with the delicious flavor of the expensive spread. You see, it's the extra amount of saturated fat that hardens other margarines into a stick. But we never harden chiffon into a stick. That's why it's lowest in saturated fat of all margarines, even the corn oil ones. Taste? No extra saturated fat to harden flavor either. Delicious, like the expensive spread. Go ahead, break this habit. Dip into new chiffon with pure liquid safflower oil. So soft, it comes in a tub. Two tubs to every pound. New chiffon. Where do you find the girl? 
how do you get to know them? That famous little black book is the wrong book. You'll find all you need in any songbook. I have met Miss Jones. And we'll go on meeting till we die. Miss Jones and Ida, sweet as apple cider. Sweeter than all I know. Evelina, won't you pay a little mind to me soon? Wake up, wake up. The earth is fair, the fruit is fine. But what's the use of smelling watermelon clinging to the other fella's vine? Evelina, won't you roll up that vine and be? I gotta get my old tuxedo press. I gotta sew a button on my vest, cause tonight I've got to look my best. Lulu's back in town. Does your mother know your rights, Cecilia? Does she know that I'm about to steal? Gigi, while you were trembling on the brink, was I out yonder somewhere blinking at a star? Oh, Gigi, have I been standing up too close? Or back too far When did your sparkle turn to fire And your warmth become desire Oh, what miracle has made you the way I love you, I love you, I love you That's all I want to say Until I find a way, I will say the only words I know that you'll understand. Michel, ma belle, sans les mots qui vont très bien ensemble, très bien ensemble. I will say the only words I know that you'll understand. These gals are music to my ears I've been hearing them for years Every little breeze seems to whisper la wheeze Birds in the trees seem to whisper la wheeze Hello Dolly, hi Miss Molly Daisy Mandy, Laura Candy A great symphonic theme That Stella by Starlight The most beautiful sound I ever heard Maria, 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 Maria All the beautiful sounds of the world in a single word Maria, 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 Maria Maria, Maria, Maria I've just met a girl named Maria And suddenly that name will never be the same to me Maria, I've just kissed a girl named Maria And suddenly I found how wonderful a sound can
been wonderful being here with Betty Davis and the other lovely young ladies on the show tonight. So if you, if you folks pass me on the way home, will you wave hello? Because I'll be the guy in the elephant. <laughs> next week, next week, your host will be Donald O'Connor. So, good night. Brought to you by New Chiffon, the first soft margarine. So soft it comes in a tub. New Chiffon margarine. And by Clairol, creators of the exciting natural look and beauty. And tonight by Clairol Condition, the beauty prescription for troubled hair. Travel arrangements for overseas acts and promotional consideration furnished by Pan American World Airways. This is Dick Tufel speaking. Don't forget, next week at the Hollywood Palace, Paul Anka, Jackie Green, Jane Morgan, Edward G. Robinson, the C.E. Troop, the Three Bugatsi, Roger Williams, and your host, Donald O'Connor.